Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robinson on NHS Ayrshire, Ayrshire and Arran Maternity Services Healthcare Improvement Scotland Review of Adverse Events. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Shona Robinson, Cabinet Secretary. Ten minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, for giving me the opportunity to make this statement. Members will be aware that in December 2016, I asked uh, Health Improvement Scotland to undertake an independent review of the management of adverse events within Ayrshire Maternity Unit at University Hospital Cross House, and that this was commissioned in response to concerns raised by families about the management of adverse events in the unit. Let me begin by extending my heartfelt condolences and sympathy to the families involved within this review, sentiments that I'm sure everyone in this chamber shares. NHS Ayrshire and Arne have already apologised and I want to extend my personal and sincere apologies to the families affected. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the many members here today who have made representations on behalf of constituents and who, who took a keen interest in the review and its outcome. This review followed two previous relevant reviews into the management of adverse events in NHS Ayrshire and Arran, carried out by his in 2012 and 2013. To ensure we heard from all the families who wanted to share their stories, I sought assurance from his that no families would be excluded and that their views and experiences would be reflected in the final report. Sixteen families in total were involved in contributing to the his review and his have shared their findings of the review with the seven families who wanted feedback, which has delayed the publication slightly. The report makes eight recommendations for improvement, six for NHS Ayrshire and Arran, focused on changes to the adverse event review process to ensure that it meets the national framework and provides simple, useful and practical processes. Improved family engagement and communication to ensure families are provided with the right information, support and opportunities to be involved in a significant adverse event process. Improved support for staff, including dedicated time to be involved in all aspects of adverse event reviews, including protected training time. Promotion of shared learning internally and externally from their improvement work, including publication of learning summaries of adverse event reviews. Revised procedures for publication of reports so that they preserve patient and family confidentiality and at the same time encourage shared learning and improved identification of and access to training for staff, including producing a training needs analysis and ensuring access to training programmes. One recommendation is directed to his to ensure the findings of this review support the further development of the national framework for adverse events and the quality of care review approach. One recommendation is for NHS Scotland to develop and agree a list of mandatory skills and competencies for maternity services. In parallel with the, his review, NHS Ayrshire and Arran commissioned an independent team of experts from the University of Leicester to review the clinical care in recent cases of stillbirth and neonatal death in the maternity unit. The team examined several cases and concluded that it is possible that differences in care uh, may have led to different outcomes for some of these babies. The report recommendations focus on quality of care, staffing and improvement activity in the unit. I also want to highlight to Parliament two other reports that were published last week that look at stillbirth and neonatal death. On the 21st of June, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists published a report into the findings of their Each Baby Counts programme. The report made expert recommendations for improvements to the quality of care for mothers and babies to reduce stillbirth and early neonatal death. On the 22nd of June, Embrace published their perinatal surveillance report, which provides an indication of the relative rates of stillbirth and neonatal deaths across the UK in 2015, and shows that Scotland has the lowest stillbirth and neonatal death rates anywhere in the UK. These reports are important because they highlight incidents across Scotland but also because they show where general improvements can be made to services and that fewer families are experiencing their loss every year uh, is something we should welcome. Turning back to the HIS and University of Leicester reviews, <clears throat> I've spoken today to the Vice Chair of NHS Ayrshire and Arran and I've made it very clear to the Board that I view the substandard practices uncovered in these reports as unacceptable. NHS Ayrshire and Arran has apologised to families and offered to meet and discuss their cases with them in person. 
The board has contacted families directly or are working with the stillbirth charity SANS to con contact other families. SANS will also offer their full bereavement support to any of the families who want it. The board has also today published a set of action plans to implement the recommendations. This includes plans to appoint a risk and quality improvement team for maternity services comprising senior maternity staff to support the changes required in the action plans. The board has also invested £1 million in midwifery staffing since 2014 and in addition has appointed an additional consultant obstetrician and clinical risk midwife. I welcome this response from NHS Air Shanaran and have been clear with the Vice Chair that I expect these plans to be implemented and evidence of the improvements published. I will meet with the board soon to get an update on implementation and I am happy to report back to Parliament on progress. His will monitor progress against the implementation of the recommendations every three months in the first instance. This information will be fed into the wider quality of care review assessment for this board. Quality of care reviews of NHS boards will commence in the autumn and these will include a focus on the leadership and governance issues surfaced by this his review. The whole Scotland uh, issues will also be fed into performance reviews with NHS boards across the country. We will work in partnership with, uh, with health boards to agree a core mandatory update training programme for maternity staff before the end of the year. It's very important that we reassure people, particularly expectant mothers, about the overall safety of our maternity services. Our rates of stillbirth and neonatal death continue to decline and according to the Embrace report, in 2015 we had a record low rate for Scotland and approaching the rates of the best performing Scandinavian countries. NHS Ayrshire and Arran has seen a 50% reduction in its stillbirth rate over the last three years as a result of the improvement activity already undertaken. In the light of the Kirkup report into, into services in Morecambe Bay, we instigated our review of maternity and neonatal services in Scotland. The Best Start report published earlier this year and implementation of the 76 recommendations is underway and will deliver safer and higher quality maternity care for women and babies. I also want to highlight a range of other activity focused on learning from adverse events and continuous improvement, including the Scottish Patient Safety Programme, in particular the, the MCQIC programme, which aims to improve safety in maternity, neonatal and paediatric services. Greater consistency and improved quality of adverse events investigation and reporting through the adverse events framework. The duty of candour provisions, which will come into effect on the 1st of April 2018, the Apologies Scotland Act 2016, a revised NHS complaints procedure and the ability for individuals to raise concerns independently through care opinion. In addition, I've asked my officials to prioritise a programme of work to support more effective learning systems within NHS services that support people affected by adverse events, conduct rigorous reviews and to share findings. This work will be overseen by the CMO and the National Clinical Director. I've also written to all health boards, drawing attention to the findings and asking those boards with above average rates of stillbirth and neonatal death to undertake independent reviews of the quality of care and then report back on plans for improvement. Later this year, our standardised perinatal mortality review tool will be launched, which will ensure all cases of stillbirth and neonatal death are systematically investigated and that parents and families are fully engaged in that process to ensure they get the answers they need as quickly as possible. Finally, Deputy Presiding Officer, I want to return to the people who matter most. That is the families who have been part of this review and have bravely shared their experiences with his, with me and with some of my colleagues here in the Chamber. It was thanks to them that this investigation took place and that the resulting improvements to care has happened and will happen. I want to thank them for the dignity and determination they have shown. I've offered to meet all of those families whose cases were included in the report to discuss the findings and listen further to their views. These meetings will be arranged over the next few weeks. However, in recognition of the role they have played in raising awareness, I would also like to offer them the opportunity to be involved in the oversight of improvements. I will establish an oversight group comprising families and representative organisations to take forward scrutiny from the service users perspective of changes that are happening, not only in Ayrshire and Arran, but in maternity and neonatal services across Scotland. 
I have written to all boards, making it clear that I expect them to be open and proactive in their communication with families who want to discuss any concerns about their care. And I would encourage any family who may have unanswered questions relating to their maternity care to contact their local board. I give my personal commitment to the Ayrshire families that action will be taken in the light of these findings. I've already expressed my sympathies and apologised to the families, but I also want to record my thanks to them. And I'm hoping to do this in person when I meet with them. And I'm sure that the Chamber will also want to join with me in expressing our gratitude. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in a statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if those members who wish to ask a question would press their request to speak buttons now. And I call first name Brian Whittle to be followed by Anna Sarber. Mr Whittle, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement? Can I also declare an interest in that my daughter is a healthcare professional in the NHS? Now, apart from the fact that his have had their wings well and truly clipped and a very narrow instruction from the Cabinet Secretary on what they were permitted to investigate, the report throws up some very glaring issues. Red flags that should have been noted have been flying for the best part of a decade, Deputy Presiding Officer. From 2009 to 2012, there were 57 adverse event reviews in Ayrshire and Arran, and following a HIST review instigated by the then Health Secretary, Nicola Sturgeon, this number fell to zero in 2013, only one in 2014 and seven in 2015. This is a significant key indicator that should have thrown up a massive red flag and at least been investigated. When I asked HIST directly about the implications of these numbers, they answered that they do not routinely monitor these numbers. And the HIST report then states, and I quote, the NHS Aaron and Ayrshire and Aaron significant event review process was not used for significant events in the maternity unit. Now, given that his categorically stated it is not their responsibility, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary who is responsible for monitoring the implementation of recommendations from this HIST review? How will this be measured? And how can the families affected by these tragedies and the NH staff themselves possibly have any faith that this review subsequent to 2012 and 2013 reviews will change anything? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, first of all, can I, can I thank Brian Whittle for, for his questions, but also uh, his um, long-term interest uh, in this issue. Uh, I think it has been important that members within this place have raised issues on behalf of constituents, and I think that has helped uh, to ensure that these reviews have uh, shed a light on many aspects of the, the practices that have not been uh, acceptable within Ayrshire and Arran. Um, can I say to Brian Whittle that I think he acknowledged in his question that the, his report is very thorough and it goes beyond actually the issue of just looking at the, the significant adverse event review process, although it deals with that in some detail. It does look at things like communication with the families and the way that boards should engage with families when something goes wrong. So it does go beyond and gets into those very, very important issues. In terms of making sure going forward uh, what happens, and I can give him this assurance, as, as I laid out in my statement, his will be monitoring the the, uh, the implementation of uh, the recommendations within Ayrshire and Iron on a three-monthly basis. Uh, I will be taking a very close personal interest in this as well and will be meeting with the board to get my personal reassurance of the implementation of these recommendations. And the board itself has established uh, mechanisms and oversight to make sure that at the most senior level within the board that that oversight is provided. And I think we should also recognise that Ayrshire and Iron have already taken many of the steps uh, to improve the services and that the external verification of the, the quality of services within Ayrshire and Arran shows a very different picture than, than before. So I hope that Brian Whittle takes some comfort from that. I'm also happy to keep him and other members uh, very closely uh, in, in contact with that progress as we take it forward. Anna Sarwar. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement and also join with her in sending our heartfelt condolences to all the individuals and families affected by this tragedy. Um, while this report covers Ayrshire and Arran, clearly there is a wider issue uh, with adverse events having taken place in other maternity units in Scotland too. There are believed to be uh, between two and three preventable deaths of babies in Scotland each week. Uh, so while I welcome the recommendations on how to deal with adverse effects, it is unfortunate that this report 
did not investigate the quality of care and give recommendations on how to prevent adverse effects. Uh, this report, the Bisclotton report, and indeed the maternity and neonatal review all point towards a workforce crisis with under, understaff wards, high vacancy rates, and high use of agency staff, which is having an impact on patient care and safety. Can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary, in, in light of the fact that the review is now underway, in terms of the recommendations being implemented, when the reduction in neonatal intensive care units will commence and when that will be completed, and whether she has given consideration, particularly considering that families at the heart of this situation, if she has given consideration to, to implement an independent public inquiry that will give confidence to the families. And lastly, when she herself will come back to Parliament and give us an update on how the review is being implemented and what recommendations have been taken forward so far. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, on the last point, I will be happy to give regular reviews back to Parliament uh, on both the local uh, implementation within Asian Arm, but also the wider uh, changes that uh, are being made. Uh, the, the point Anna Sarwar, the question Anna Sarwar made about the prevention of, of adverse events is a really important one, and I think these reviews are very important and set out the actions that they set out and the implementation of these changes will indeed uh, make sure that our services are as safe as they can be. Sometimes, uh, as we know, uh, events happen within our NHS um, and uh, those are very, very, very difficult to predict and sometimes those are unavoidable. But what we're talking about here is trying to prevent avoidable adverse events happening. And one of the, the key elements uh, uh, within the recommendations is, for example, around the, the, uh, the CTG training, which is around fetal heart rate monitoring. Um, this will be mandatory. Uh, and the chief medical officer is going to ensure through, the, uh, through medical directors that uh, this training is mandatory. And that is really important. And it's also something that Mr. Morton uh, raised very directly as being a, a key weakness, as he, he uh, said within uh, his, uh, uh, his own uh, very, very sad case of the, the death of his son. Lucas. So I would want to say to Mr Morton, first of all, that I hope that that gives him some uh, personal reassurance that that very important issue about the training with, of our midwives in interpreting uh, CTG uh, will, will be a very, very important thing, that they will have to attend a minimum of two sessions per annum. It will be mandatory and the CMO will give oversight uh, to that. In terms of the, the, the public inquiry, uh, can I say this to Anna Sarwar? We have now had a number of, of inquiries and, and reviews. The His review and indeed the Leicester review have uh, been have uh, identified a number of issues that now ha have to be resolved. Many of those uh, important changes and improvements have already been made. Uh, these recommendations lay out what more has to be made. And I think the most important thing. Uh, is that we get on with doing that. And I do believe that these, the actions already taken that those that will be taken will give us the best chance of uh, avoiding future unnecessary and avoidable deaths within our units. Thank you. I have 10 members wishing to ask questions. Um, I'm asking you to be disciplined, go straight to questions, to allow all members in on this very important and sensitive issue. I call Willie Coffey, followed by Jamie Green. Thanks, President Officer. Having just received the report and spoken to the Chief Medical Officer, it's clear that Ayrshire and Arran had not fully implemented the recommendations made to them in 2012-13 with respect to training for staff and openness and transparency in how they supported affected families. What action does the Cabinet Secretary propose to take on this to improve safety and to ensure and verify that any new recommendations are carried out? And how can Ayrshire and Arran regain the trust of all families affected by these tragic events. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I also say to Willie Coffey, I recognise the, the, the fact that he has raised uh, cases uh, with me directly also. I, I'm glad that he met the, the Chief Medical Officer uh, earlier on, as I think Brian Whittle did, because I think the Chief Medical Officer was able to go through some of the detail in what is a very, very complex uh, set of complex issues and indeed uh, complex reports uh, going into to quite some, some detail. But the point that, that Willie Coffey makes is a simple one. How, how can we be assured 
that these recommendations that will make a difference and uh, uh, importantly will make our services uh, safer uh, how can we be assured that, the, that these will happen? Well, first of all, uh, I will make sure in terms of the oversight that the Scottish Government provides through the Chief Medical Officer and through our Clinical Director that we keep a very close eye, not just on Ayrshire and Aaron's implementation, but the rest of our board's implementation of this. And as I said in my statement, I have written to boards setting out my expectations of doing that. The mandatory training uh, will, it will be, as it says, mandatory. And that will be uh, monitored to make sure that midwives are getting the opportunity uh, to have that critical uh, training. And of course, we would expect uh, Healthcare Improvement Scotland, as it is doing with Ayrshire and Arran, to take a very, very close three-monthly uh, update of how those, how those recommendations are being implemented. I hope all of that taken together will give Willie Coffey and, importantly, the families reassurance that these recommendations will be taken forward. Forward. And of course, it is important to recognise the improvements that have already been made within Ayrshire and Arran, including the 50% reduction in the rate of stillbirth since 2013. I think that should be acknowledged. Jamie Green, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. There was an, a history review in 2012 and another in 2013, and today we review the recommendations of another in 2017 with an unfortunate sense of deja vu in some of the points that it makes. Uh, as Brian Whittle points out, his is not a regulatory body, nor has the power to direct, directly instruct health boards to comply with the conclusion. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, in addition to the measures she just laid out to the previous question, uh, what measures are available to her uh, if health boards do not comply with the recommendations of these various reports? Cabinet Secretary. Well, ultimately, can I say to Jamie Green, I have ministerial powers of direction uh, over health boards, but I would hope that the measures that I have set out uh, and, uh, will be taken forward by health boards of their own accord, because at the end of the day, they should be motivated, and I'm sure will be motivated, to want to provide the best possible uh, and safest services to, um, to uh, babies and, and their mums. Uh, can I say about Healthcare Improvement Scotland, it's important to note that when Healthcare Improvement Scotland undertake an independent review, they bring in people from outside. So, for example, in this case, the review was chaired by Tracy Johnson, who is a consultant obstetrician at Birmingham uh, Women's Hospital, bringing that external uh, independent view of the service. And I think it's fair to say that it has very much shone a light on areas of practice that need to improve. Um, I should also say that Healthcare Improvement Scotland has also got extensive powers. It has the, the same independent legal status, for example, as the Care Quality Commission uh, in England. The ministers uh, appoint uh, in, the same, in the same way uh, north and south of the border. And it has powers of intervention. It can close wards, for example. Uh, so it does have extensive powers, as do I. But I would hope that we will see boards getting on with implementing these changes and we will certainly give a strong and close oversight to make sure that happens. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Mr. The actual deaths in NHS Ayrshire and Arne over three years is very welcome progress. Nevertheless, does the Cabinet Secretary accept that many bereaved parents in Ayrshire feel that some of their questions remain unanswered or have been answered only after intensive lobbying by MSPs, patient groups and others on their behalf? And will all of the recommendations be implemented by other health boards and what further steps will be taken to absolutely minimise the number of stillbirths and neonatal deaths, not just in NHS Ayrshire and Arne, but across Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can, I, can I say to, to Kenny Gibson, recognise um, how, how much of uh, uh, an interest he has, has taken in these issues and, uh, and continues uh, to do so. He makes some very, very important points about the, the bereaved families and their questions of which they may feel they have still uh, questions that remain unanswered. Uh, I will be meeting, as I say, with the, the families who want to meet with me and we will talk about whether they, they feel that there are still questions that are un unanswered and we will look at how we can ensure that they, they get answers to any remaining questions that they 
have. In terms of other health boards, we would expect all health boards to implement these recommendations. Of course, the focus has been on Ayrshire and Iron for understandable reasons, but we would expect all health boards to equally implement these recommendations. In terms of external assurance, Kenny Gibson will hopefully be aware that Embrace was established as a, a UK surveillance team to make sure that every year they can shine a light on those units that are uh, above the average for stillbirth and neonatal deaths and that is very very important and through that we have seen that in 2015 actually Scotland's uh, units have been performing uh, very well indeed we have seen the lowest rates of stillbirth and neonatal deaths uh, across the UK uh, in Scotland but we are absolutely not complacent there is more work to be done to ensure that that improvement continues and I'm determined to make sure that happens. Colin Smith, followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. Cabinet Secretary, this review praises maternity staff at Cross Health Hospital for their professionalism, but highlights the impact of staff shortages, revealing that in March 2017, a senior manager in Ayrshire and Arran said staff shortages were, and I quote, contributing to our ability to deal effectively with day-to-day -day workload and provide effective and safe care for women children and neonate. They went on to say this meant staff could not be released for training and therefore, and I quote again, will not be trained to the standard to provide assurances of the quality of care being delivered. Well, Ayrshire and Arran have now increased staffing, can the Cabinet Secretary give a personal assurance to families across Scotland that all our maternity units are currently adequately staffed and those staff have the training they need? Cabinet Secretary that uh, all units apply the workload planning tool and as part of this work going forward uh, we will be wanting to make sure that all units are doing that and of course the member is quite right and I think in his question pointed to the staffing increase that there's been within the Ayrshire maternity unit quite significantly uh, we've seen a, a, a rise in the whole time equivalent from 2014-15 from 181.34 to 2016-17 of 196.7 and since April 2016, additional funding for 6.6 .6 whole-time equivalent midwives was agreed. And at the end of June 2017, an additional 14 whole-time equivalent midwives are currently in the process of being recruited. And that is because of the application of the midwifery workload planning tool. We would expect that planning tool to be applied to all units to make sure that not just the numbers of staff, but that the staff um, reflect the, the needs of the patient cohort and can be adjusted depending on the needs of the, the patients within the unit. Emma Harper followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. I remind Chamber I have a licence to practice as a registered nurse. It's what financial support will be provided to help NHS Ayrshire and Arran implement the recommendations outlined in the report. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I say to Emma Harper that, uh, first of all, we should recognise that Ayrshire and Arran themselves have um, invested uh, over a, a million pounds in a, an additional uh, staffing, particularly in expanding uh, their midwife, uh, midwifery uh, workforce. In terms of any uh, additional resources, uh, we are um, making sure that we support uh, Ayrshire and Arran through uh, resources from the Scottish Government in terms of, of people and expertise. Healthcare Improvement Scotland will be doing likewise and Ayrshire and Arran themselves have set up and established an oversight team which they have resourced uh, to make sure that they can have confidence that these recommendations are uh, taken forward. Um, and we will in, in, in continue to uh, uh, speak to Ayrshire and Arran about any other support that they may require. Alison Johnson, followed by Alec Cole Hamilton. Um, I'm glad that the Cabinet Secretary has highlighted the valuable role that SANS play, and I would appreciate if the Cabinet Secretary could inform us of how the Scottish Government is drawing on their expertise to improve support for bereaved parents. And there has been some discussion of a national bereavement strategy. Can the Cabinet Secretary offer any updates on that strategy and how it might reflect the psychological and emotional support parents need in these most devastating circumstances. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank Alison Johnson for her question. Uh, I want to also thank SANS for the support that they have provided and have offered to provide to 
families um, and, and will continue to provide in any further meetings that, uh, that families want to undertake uh, with the board and indeed with, with myself uh, and others. They provide a very, very important uh, service. In terms of the National Bereavement Strategy, um, work is ongoing with that. I'm happy to, to write to Alison Johnston to update her uh, on that. But I think it is uh, very important that uh, families that want that support, not all will, but any, any families that want that support are offered it uh, um, as quickly as possible. Last question, Alec Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary recognise that the emotional support referred to by Alison Johnston available to families affected by stillbirth is not uh, universally available across Scotland? In that context, what additional support will her government extend to charities like SANS? And what will she do to extend NHS support to those families dealing with the long-term emotional trauma of adverse events, living in health boards not currently served by specialist perinatal mental health teams? Cabinet Secretary. Oh, we would expect boards um, to make sure that families get the support that they require, no matter where uh, in Scotland they are living. Uh, SANS uh, is a key organisation providing that support, and we will have an ongoing dialogue with SANS about how uh, we make sure that they uh, are supported in order to continue uh, doing uh, that work. Uh, and uh, we will make sure that in, in terms of, of uh, families who who perhaps will we'll still uh, come forward that first of all the boards uh, listen uh, to what they have to say that they, uh, are, there is an open culture of hearing uh, and listening and acting on concerns raised by families um, and we have of course the um, the, uh, the, the changes that uh, are coming forward in terms of the, uh, the legislation uh, to require um, boards to uh, have a more open and transparent culture in terms of the duty of candour. I think that will help to make sure that we have the right culture um, in order to uh, ensure that people can come forward, but importantly, when they do, that they get the support that they need. Can I apologise to the three members, Claire Hockey, Donald Cameron and Fulton McGregor, who were not called, but I thought in this instance it was important on this topic to allow longer questions and certainly uh, longer answers. And that concludes questions to the Cabinet Secretary and we'll move on to the next item of business shortly.